As we enter the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, it is important to be mindful of our recent journey. We have come today from different places, in different situations, in different frames of mind. Together, let us offer a body prayer to focus and center. Get comfortable, take a few cleansing breaths, clear your mind. For the first time through, just listen as I offer the prayer. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. I will read the prayer again and add motions. And as you feel able and comfortable, join me, either sitting or standing as we offer this prayer a few times. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Amen. Thank you for this moment of intentionally centering and preparing for communion. First and foremost, this sacrament is about God. God invites us to the table. God meets us in the gift of Jesus through the bread and wine as symbol and sign. And God's Spirit lives as a felt presence among us. God desires to extend love and grace to human beings. The sacrament includes visible, tangible signs of the invisible mystery that is God. In some physical way, the sacraments point to the invisible presence of an infinite God who offers us grace. The bread and wine help make that grace present or visible to us or imaginable to us, something we can touch and feel. Consider for a moment how this sacrament makes God real for you. Why are you here? How do you come to the table? What do you hope to experience? How do you remember Jesus? Several years ago, my morning commute to work was usually about 40 minutes. I used the time to meditate, pray, and offer praise. One morning, things did not go well at our house. <laughs> my husband and I argued about something dealing with money. My son overslept and made me late. My daughter and I conflicted over her plans for the day. And as I dropped her off at school, she slammed the car door in anger. And I said sarcastically to myself, I love you too, Sarah. By the time my commute to work started, I could not think of a way to move into God's presence. I was angry and crabby. And then I remembered Jesus and began to sing out loud, Upon the cross of Jesus, my eye at times can see the very dying form of one who suffered there for me. And from my stricken heart with tears, two wonders I confess, the wonders of redeeming love and my unworthiness. With those words, my day shifted. I remembered that Jesus desires to participate in my life, my decision-making, my behavior, my priority-setting not out of guilt, but simply to make my life more aligned with the Christ I follow. 
The communion experience is a good time to remember our baptismal covenant, reminding ourselves that we made a commitment to be a follower of Jesus. At the table, we remember that promise and consider the state of our lives. What conversation did you have with God on your way to the communion table today? Our human tendency is to make this sacrament about ourselves. God, what should I do? It can be very self-centered. God, I'm here, now bless me. But the Lord's Supper is not first about us. It began with Jesus. We are here to remember his last night with his disciples. We recall his death on behalf of a suffering world. We recall his resurrection and his continuing presence among us. The broken body and spilled blood of this meal represents God's acceptance and sacrificial love for us. The good news of this sacrament is that God always gives us a fresh start at this table. We are sinful, yet we are beloved by God. When we come in humility, repenting of our sins, God's grace transforms us. We are forgiven and made new. Just as we each are formed and shaped into individual disciples with unique gifts and ministry, we also come as a community of believers together. I reach out to take the bread and the wine, and so do you. A thousand times over today, hands will hold bread and wine. It forms us into a sacred community. Whether you think of it as sharing with those in your own group or as a global phenomenon, it's important to expand our individual experience to include those with whom we share in Christ's mission, past and present. It is vital for us to feel connected to something larger than ourselves. I will never forget the presence of the Holy Spirit as church members from Germany presented President Wallace B. Smith with chunks from the former Berlin Wall at World Conference in 1990. As a body, I think we realized that God was already active in that situation, working in ways we couldn't have imagined. We remembered that the divine participates in the events of the world. We, as an assembled body of disciples, affirmed that the Lord had something to do with the tearing down of that awful, divisive barrier, and we felt part of it. The Last Supper, as referenced in the New Testament Gospels and Letters, focuses on remembrance. Through symbol and example, Jesus instructs the disciple to remember and bear record to all the world. Listen for that connection in this earliest recorded version of the Last Supper found in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. To whom do you proclaim the risen Christ? Who can you invite to this table? What are you remembering? It is in the living of our lives that the remembering must take place. 
We can smile at the humor of Benjamin Franklin when he said, some people die at 25 and aren't buried until 75. In our better moments, we overcome inactivity and complacency and feel energized and mobilized to share the good news more broadly. The words of recent guidance call us to a heightened awareness of our community. Open your hearts and feel the yearnings of your brothers and sisters who are lonely, despised, fearful, neglected, unloved. Reach out in understanding, clasp their hands, and invite all to share in the blessings of community created in the name of the one who suffered on behalf of all. One communion Sunday, I sat down after giving the communion talk. From my vantage point, I could see the entire congregation in the sanctuary and outside the church's windows to the north and the south. On the north edge of the property is a gated community shelter for abused women and children. As the bread and wine were blessed, and I prepared to help serve the emblems, my eyes were drawn outside to a group that had congregated in the parking lot. They seemed to be having fun and enjoying each other's company. The spirit whispered and I leaned over and said to the pastor, do you think we should take the trays outside and serve them? It was meant primarily as a rhetorical question, but we both continued to live with the idea of taking the communion trays out of the building to serve others. It was a reminder. This sacrament is for everyone committed to following Jesus, and we are to spread the word. Jesus commands, do this in remembrance of me. Often we drown out our remembering with noise, fear, and distractions. We avoid that which is uncomfortable or fearful for us. Can we expand beyond these limitations and love the stars, even when life is difficult? So we end where we began. Will you join me in the short prayer we offered earlier? And as best you can, offer it as a prayer of preparation for the communion. Though my soul may set in darkness, it will rise in perfect light. I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Amen.